let's just consider the double integral, okay, of partial f, partial y, okay, with respect to a. Well, certainly, this one simply says that we take a certain function, the partial f, partial y, and then we integrate over the area d, area d is over here. However, the, the graph doesn't concern me now, but it does in a bit because I can just use the standard methods of evaluating a double integral, okay? A recap of the method, just think of it as when you're integrating, okay, you think of a vertical line like this that sweeps through this way, okay, for you to find the limits of x and y. So if the vertical line sweeps through from this way, the limits of x would be from a to b, okay, because the line is going from this way to this way, okay, and the limits of y would be this function and this function over here. So I'll put hx and kx at the bottom. Just using standard methods of evaluating double integral, not too complicated. Then partial f, partial y, okay? And then dy dA, d, dy dx. Integrate first with respect to x, with respect to y, integrate with respect to x after that, okay? Now, let's just focus on here. I got a certain function f. I take the, the first partial derivative in terms of y, and then after that, I integrate with respect to y again. So what does that mean? Well, we all know that that can be simply written as function f evaluated at y equals to hx and y equals to kx. And then after that, differentiating or integrating with respect to x. Let me just have a quick glance, and that is correct. Now, Doing so, we can just immediately rewrite that as, okay, or, okay, just keeping in mind this formula, I'm just going to erase this and rewrite it over here, okay. Integrate a to b, so I'll first put the function f, or I'll put this one kx into the function f first. That will just give me function f x kx, okay. And after that, I subtract function x, putting now this one into function f, okay, that will be hx. Okay, and that would be correct. And different, integrate that with respect to x. I don't know why I keep on saying integrating. Okay, so now, once we have done all of that, can we find the match already? Well, this one, okay, is equal to this. This one over here is equal to this, okay? So if I just simply introduce a negative sign, okay? If I introduce a negative sign, this one will give me plus Okay, this one will give me minus here, right? I'll just introduce a negative sign over here. Then we'll just switch the, the addition and the subtraction around. And then I can see that this hx is over here, okay? And this minus kx, function f of x and kx is over here like so. And that will simply mean that this is equals to this over here. So I can just erase that and just write this is equals to this over here. Just like how, what we have set out to prove, okay? And I'm just telling you that that is just the first half of Green's theorem because we are left with the GX part. Now, I'm not going to show it to you due to the lack of time, okay? But as you know, you saw a GX, um, G function GXY integrate with respect to y, okay? Now, how we're gonna do about do, uh, go about doing that is that we need to redefine the curve now, okay? Because remember, now it is in terms of y. So whatever curve that we have is the same curve, okay? We just redefine it by change c to d, okay? And then this one we can just label as capital GX, and this one is capital F and the area d is here. And you just use the same method to calculate the, the corresponding closed loop line integral of function g. And then after that, when you add them up, you get Green's theorem, okay? A very long proof, okay? But I hope that I've done it with enough mathematical rigor to convince you that that is the proof of Green's theorem. Splitting it up and then evaluating this using the curve over there, bearing in mind rules of integration applies only if we have a function, having function hx, kx, and then substituting the hx and kx into the, the y value over here, okay? Because the function that we're integrating is f, and this one is just uh, gives the relationship between the x and y, okay? So, Green's theorem, hope that was good enough, okay? Thanks. Close, it must be